Where would you be if you let go of your greatest fear? Whether it's dating, getting married for the first time, or again, or heights, or bugs, or snakes, whatever your fear, it is holding you back. In this video, I want you to learn how to overcome your greatest fear to become unstoppable. Because if you overcome your greatest fear, it gives you the power to know that you can overcome anything. You see the power in that? So I have a process. I call it the BRAVE process. And in five steps, I want to show you how you can take anything that's blocking you, that you feel uncertainty or concern or hesitation about, and expose yourself to this process in that in an order that will allow you to metabolize your fear and turn it into excitement. I've done this with three personal phobias, as well as many other aspects of my life that I have dealt with fear or limiting emotions that are stopping me from moving into a place that I want. So BRAVE is the acronym, which is pretty good, right? It's a, it's a counter to fear already, so are you with me? I'm gonna tell you how I use this in my life to overcome my phobia of snakes. When I was a kid, I don't know why, but I was terrified of snakes. I always just figure I'm wise, so I know what to be scared of. But it was an unreasonable, irrational fear. It was a phobia. If I was flipping through, I would. I, my dad had National Geographic magazines, and I loved those. The pictures of places around the world, the things that I could see, it just fascinated me. And I would peruse these magazines all the time. And occasionally I would come across a picture of a snake. And if I saw a picture of a snake in one of those National Geographic magazines, my reaction was absolutely instinctual terror. I would throw it across the room. I wouldn't even touch the magazine after that. I couldn't, if I saw it, I knew there was a snake in it. I would know the cover of it. I wouldn't even touch that magazine anymore. It was a problem. For a young boy growing up in a small town in Canada, being scared of snakes was not something that I really felt was safe to be. My friends would run around in the forest finding snakes and they'd be like, hey, there, I hear one over here. I'd head in the opposite direction. I was wise enough at that age to not let anybody know how terrified I was because had my friends known, I would have become victim to many snake anecdotes, you know, dumping snakes down my back, whatever. I knew that, so I kept a lid on it. I hid the fact that I was scared as much as I could. But it was one of those things that always bothered me. I felt like I was a brave guy, yet I would just collapse in this space, and I didn't like it. And so I decided to try to get over it. And this is the process that I did, or that I developed in doing this, and I've used it over and over again to break through other fears. It's called brave. And the first thing you have to do with B is boldly admit that you are afraid. Boldly admit that there's something blocking you. Look at it. Consider that there is in your mind a, a mental space that is keeping you from penetrating into an area that you want to go. Now if you don't want to overcome a fear, you don't have to. You have to want to do it. I wanted to overcome my fear of snakes. And so I realized, yeah, I'm scared. I really truly am scared. And doing that allowed me to get my hands around it. I admitted it to myself. Once that was done, then I had to recognize where I was brave. In what spaces of my life am I showing up with bravery? I've been always a physical person. I, I had the guts to jump off high cliffs and dive or do, you know, do these types of things that boys look at and think, wow, that's brave, I'd love to do that. That was a space for me that I was confident. I could do a lot of stuff that people felt was brave and I could mess up. You know, I was learning how to do a backflip on my trampoline when I was a kid and my friends were all watching and they were all scared to do the initial attempt, right? We knew the theory behind it, knees up, tuck, roll backwards, head back, right? The idea of all that we understood, but none of us had actually done it. I tried. And my first attempt at a backflip, um, I didn't jump up high, I jumped backwards. And we had a round trampoline and I went all the way over and I didn't rotate properly and my head went between the springs, my shoulders on the springs, and I flipped and landed off the trampoline onto the concrete. Now, <laughs> that sounds really dangerous and it was, 
if I had hit my neck on that um, bar around the tramp, you know, who knows what would happen. But I did it. I made the attempt. I messed it up. I got, I didn't care. Everyone's like, oh my goodness, that was crazy. And I now knew what I needed to do after that mistake. I got back up, I did a backflip again, and I landed the next one because I wasn't scared. It wasn't a place that bothered me. With snakes, not the case, right? I don't come in brave. I'm terrified of everything. But when I take that template of how I could do something that other people would be afraid of, and I am place that over where I'm scared, it gives me a different mindset through which I can approach this. So once you recognize that, you hold on to that template of bravery. After you recognize where you are brave, you act on one aspect of the fear at a time. For me, the depth of my fear with snakes was profound. It was substantial, right? I see a picture. I can't even look at a picture of a snake. So I started small. I didn't even want to pull up pictures. So I went to the magazines that my dad had, the National Geographic magazines, and the ones that had pictures of snakes in them, I would pull one out, and just touching the magazine was hard for me. So I didn't even hold on to it. I'd pull it out, I'd set it on a table, and I would hover my hand above the magazine and get used to feeling that fear. That was the step I took. It was a small step. It was incremental in relative to me being, over, you know, being able to say, hey, I'm not scared of snakes. This wasn't even close, but it was more than what I was willing to do previous. And so I pushed myself into a zone where I was acting on my fear, but still not overwhelmed by it, not overcome. After you act on that, then you verify the worst case scenario of what you're doing. What is the worst possible thing that could happen from me placing my hand over this magazine and saying to myself, hey, um, I want to you know, get over my fear of snakes. As I stood there or sat there with my hand over that magazine, there really was no worst case scenario outcome. Um, Maybe I could get a paper cut if I pulled my hand away really quick and touched the magazine. No snake was gonna bite me. Nothing was gonna hurt me. I just, the worst case scenario was that I was gonna feel uncomfortable because I was placing myself in a space of fear. And I knew I could deal with that. I knew I could. I'd had more pain in my life at that age than I had, you know, would have experienced by feeling a little bit of discomfort. And so once you understand, oh, that's the worst case scenario, then you decide, can I live with this? If I can live with the worst case scenario of whatever it is I'm venturing into, well, I can do this. I know I can. You can find your bravery to face this confrontation that you're going to make within yourself. So I did this. I would put my hand over the, the magazine and wait, and it was hard for me to do. It filled me with a lot of fear. And the last step, what I did, was I extended my tolerance for fear as I, as I would place my hand over this magazine. I would hold it there while I experienced the fear. And I would hold it for as long as I could. At first, I'd put my hand out, pull it back, and pull it. It was just a reaction, right? So phobia, I'd pull it back, and then I would just push it there and hold it and be like, oh, shaking. Eventually, I no longer shook. I was no longer scared. So then I would touch the magazine. I would lay my hand on top of it. Once I got comfortable with that, I opened the magazine. I eventually found the page of the picture of the snake that I was scared of. And I put my hand above that until I got to a place where I could touch it. These were incremental processes and stages that I went through over years of my life, trying to overcome this phobia. It was a big one for me. By the time I was 21, I have a picture of myself holding a bow constrictor around my neck, but a 16 foot bow constrictor. It was a terrifying thing for me to do, but also exhilarating. My excitement had at this point overtaken my fear. I had time to prepare to hold this snake and to get my head space in a place where I knew I was gonna be okay but it was a big, big thing for me to be able to do that. It was exciting. 
But then I saw a crocodile hunter, you know? And he would run around and he would grab the most poisonous snakes in the world by the tail and he had no fear of these animals at all. That inspired me. I wanted to be as brave as him. I thought, man alive, imagine if I was out in the wild and I came across a snake, a rattlesnake, and I could grab that thing by the tail. That would be a true demonstration of me overcoming my big fears. That became a goal in my mind and I continue with my process of running through incrementally this template, my fears. And this summer, I was running in Utah up um, Grandier Peak. I think it's up a little Cottonwood Canyon. And as I was coming, oh, it's Mill Creek. I was running up this, can this, this, it's about a three mile trail up to the top of this mountain. It's steep and it's rocky. And on the side of the trail, as I was coming, I heard a rattle. And my initial reaction still, when I encounter a snake by surprise, is fear. I startled, I stepped back. <sighs> I felt my energy, my, my fear ignite, and I just kind of took a breath and calmed. I spotted where the snake was and it was coiled on the side of the trail. It was a small one, small rattlesnake. And uh, apparently, um, small rattlesnakes are more dangerous than the big ones because they cannot regulate their venom. So I knew I was dealing with something that was dangerous. I know I don't like um, rattlesnakes. And the excitement was actually more enthralling to me at this point than the fear of getting close to this snake. That was a cool moment for me to think, oh my goodness, I'm excited to confront this opportunity that I normally would have turned it and run away from in terror. And I um, tossed some rocks around the snake and it turned and it started to like um, slither away. And when it did that, I reached out, I walked up, a bent over, reached out and grabbed the snake by its rattle and lifted a little bit. I didn't do a full on crocodile hunter, let it swing around, but as its head turned, I pulled back and the adrenaline that filled my body and the excitement and the exhilaration was tangible. I just felt it rush all the way up my head, lit me up. I had done something that I honestly never imagined that I would ever do. I had grabbed the tail of a rattlesnake when, as a kid, a garter snake would send me off in fits of fear running. Big, big accomplishment for me. Doesn't do anything for me in my business, doesn't do anything for me to enhance my career in an infected, you know, touching a rattlesnake does nothing. I'm not the crocodile hunter, no one cares but internally for me to know that I could overcome such a completely crippling, debilitating fear through my own power and my own strength and metabolize that into a place of excitement, it, well, it's, it's something that's thrilling. So then I know if I actually want to do it, if I want to do it and there's fear blocking me, that is no block at all. I can chew through that I can find a way to make it happen. I have all the confidence in the world. And this is important when we're facing life because we get things thrown at us all the time that make us uncomfortable, that may make us wonder if we have the capacity to beat what it is we're facing. These are all symptoms of fear. I call it fear. And you may say to yourself, well, I'm not scared of anything. But where are the places in your life that you are facing a block or you're feeling uncertain or you have to act maybe without all the information that you need in your life, where you're about to consider taking a new step in a direction that you have never been before? Or is there something in you that is longing to do some activity or learn a new skill and you have never allowed yourself to go there because you're too scared? I don't know what it is you're facing, but I promise you if you approach that, and metabolize the fear that is there and become excited, it will unleash within you a level of creativity, innovation, and expansion that you have not yet experienced in many ways. Um, you can do this in other ways, but this is a unique one where you can really bust down walls that are limiting you. So I hope you can use this template to your advantage. Find that thing that you want to do 
and bust through to the other side. This is how to overcome your greatest fear. Hope that you have ways that you've done this in your life as well. And if you haven't, or if there's something you're longing to do, let me know. Let's see if we can help you overcome that. And if you want to stick around, I'll tell you how we can face the future without fear on my next video coming up. Hey, thanks for watching. I'm James Burnham. Check it out.